Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 11 of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to talk about lists, the bubble sort, and a whole lot more. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so with lists, we're going to be able to refer to groups of data with just one name. And each item in the list is going to correspond to a number or an index, as you can see right here. Those represent our indexes. And this works just the same way as most people have identification numbers. And by default, as you can see here, the first item is going to have the index of zero. And how Python lists may be different from other languages is that they can grow in size and they can also contain data of different data types. And an awesome thing about lists is that you can use many of the same functions with them that you use with strings. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to create a random list and I'm going to throw a string inside of it and the thing is you got to have opening and closing brackets with them. I can also come in and throw a float inside of it and integers of course and there you go you just created a list. You can also create lists using ranges so let's say I wanted to go 1 to 10 like that is equal to and then I just need to go list and range and 10. And actually it would be 11 if I wanted to include 10. I'm going to be able to combine lists. So I can go random list like this is equal to random list plus 1 to 10. I'm going to be able to get the first items by referring to the index, the first index, which is zero, like I said. So random list like that, bracket zero, run it, and you can see that string comes back as output. We're going to be able to get our length or the number of items in our list using the len function, which you're well aware of. Like I said, pretty much anything you can do with strings, you're going to be able to do with lists as well. I can also use slice. So let's say that I wanted to get the first three items out of a list. I could go first three is equal to random list and start at zero and three. And that's going to get me the first three items that I stored there. I'm also going to be able to cycle through a list and I've actually done this before in previous tutorials. So first three, colon, and then we could say print curly brackets and format. And I'm going to go and get the value as well as our index. So I'm going to say first three and the value that I want out of there as well as the index itself. And you can see they printed those out. You're going to be able to repeat list items. So let's go first three and just multiply that times three as we've done previously also. We're going to be able to search a list for a specific item. So we could say string for example in first three going to come back as true. You can get the index for a matching item as well. Index of string. And to do that, just get your list you're working with and then go index and whatever the thing is, the value you're searching for, comes back as zero. We're also going to be able to find out how many times an item is in a list. So let's just go and use this. So I'm going to say how many strings and just use count with string. And you'll see that comes back as one. We're also going to be able to change list items just by referring to the index that you want to change. So I can say zero is equal to and then change this to new string. And we can go through here and print that out again. Let's just go and copy this or cut it out of there. Throw that down here, run it, and you can see new strings in there now. We're going to be able to add additional values. Let's go and throw this inside of here. So I'm going to say first three, 
just by using a pen and that's going to put it at the end of our string and there it is and that's a good amount of information for now and now what I want you to do is try to solve a problem alright so for this problem what I want you to do is generate a random list of five values between one and nine so you can pause your screen right now and give that a try. Otherwise, I'm going to provide you with a solution right now. All right, so the first thing we're going to need to do is import the random module. Then after that, I'm going to define a number list that is empty. And I'm going to go for i in range. And I'm going to generate the five values. And then I can say number list append and then go random and rand range and one through nine and there we are we just created it and then we could say for i in num list print i run it and there you can see your random values and we can run it again to get more random values alright so cool stuff hopefully you got that right and now I'm going to talk about the bubble sort. Okay, so the way the bubble sort works is you're going to have an outer loop that's going to decrease in size each time you cycle through a list. And the goal is to have the largest number at the end of the list when the outer loop completes one cycle. So we're going to cycle through an entire list with one singular goal, which is to have the largest number at the end of the list whenever we finish cycling through the list the first time. And the inner loop is going to be comparing indexes at the beginning of the loop. And simply what we're going to do is check if list item, the very first one, is greater than the next item in our list. And if that comes back as true, we're going to swap the index values. And whenever the inner loop completes, the largest number is most definitely going to be at the end because we've checked every single one of them. And then what we just need to do at that point is just shrink our list down by one because we already know that the largest is at the end and then continue doing that over and over again. So now what I'm going to do is step you through the process of creating a bubble sort. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go and get the previous code that we created. This guy right here, number list and I'm going to have it sort the number list. So I'm going to say i is equal to the length of our number list minus 1. And this value will decrement for our outer loop. And its value is the last index inside of our list. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say while i is greater than 1, I'm going to continue cycling. I'm going to go j equal to zero and while j is less than i and what I'm going to do is put some ex extra code inside of here that's going to allow us to track the comparison of our index values so that you can actually see what's going on as the bubble sort is working. So I'm going to throw a new line inside of there and I'm going to say is greater than this guy and then I'll say format num list j and then num list j plus one this is going to print out on our screen so as the bubble sort runs you're going to see precisely on the screen what is going on so that you have a complete understanding of how the bubble sort works so then what I'll do is I'll say if number list j is greater than number list j plus 1 exactly as I just printed out there on the screen well in that situation I'm also gonna print onto the screen that there was a switch so you'll be able to see in the code how the bubble sorts working then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch those values and how I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna take whatever is in the first part of our list store it in a temporary value that will then allow me to come in and store or replace what was previously there with the new value that I want to put there. So that's j plus 1. And then what I can do is take the stored value from temp 
and put it back in place. So this is a common programming technique where we can switch values by using a temporary variable to store. Else, if it's not, I'm going to print on the screen, don't switch. So we'll just leave everything exactly the way that it is. And I'm putting all these print statements in here just to allow you to easily understand how a bubble sort works. Then we're just going to increase the value for J. And then I want to also track the changes to our list each iteration through. In number list, I'm going to print everything out. So I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to say end nothing so that we don't have any new lines. And then after we print our list, I'll call print so that we do get a new line. And then I'm also going to say print, and I'll say end of round. So that will show in the output that we've cycled through 100%. Well, then what I need to do is decrement the value of i so that we don't search the list over and over again. We already know that we have the largest number farthest to the right. And then why don't we output those results again, just for the heck of it. All right, so pretty simple stuff. And we can run it. And what you're going to see here is we very first check that 5 is greater than 2. Well, you know what? What I'm going to do here first is I'm actually going to print out all of these list items so that you can actually see them on the screen. So for i in number list, print i, and then we'll say and equal to. So very first thing we do is we see our values. So 3, 7, 4, 4, 8, those are the values inside of our list. Then what we're going to do is you can see we're checking. Is 3 greater than 7? Well, no it isn't. So don't switch. So the number or the list stays exactly the same. Then we check 7 or 4. Is 7 greater than 4? Yes. So switch it. So you can see we flip those values right like that. Then we're going to say, is 7 greater than the next 4 inside of our list? Yes, it is. Switch it. So you can see how the largest value slowly moves to the right until it gets down here where it says, is 7 greater than 8? It isn't. Don't switch. We've gotten to the very last item inside of our list. That's the end of our round. And this is what our list looks like at the end. Then what it does is it cycles through and it checks all the remaining values. You're going to notice that it does not check the 8 though. It only checks right up to this. End of round, that means that these numbers are properly in place. We will no longer check them. And it continues doing that until we get our final list. And that's exactly how the bubble sort works. So hopefully that made 100% sense. If it didn't, leave me a question in the comments section and I'll help you understand everything 100%. And otherwise, I'm going to cover some more list functions. All right, so I'm going to come in here and import random again. And I'm going to create number list again. Then I'm going to go for i in range 5 and number list, append, and just get some random values to throw inside of there. Random range, 1 through 9. So there we go. We have our random list. Now there's also a built-in sort function. So we can come in and just go num list and sort, and it's going to sort that for us. We're also going to be able to reverse values. Let's go in here and actually print out all of the list items here so you can see the changes as I make them. So number list, print, and I'm going to say, in this situation, I'm going to say K. And then I'm also going to separate everything with a comma and a space. And then throw print here at the end so you get a new line after that. So there you go. Now you can see that I'm able to sort the values. I'm also going to be able to reverse values. Well, actually, let's leave sort inside of there and then copy it and reverse it just by saying reverse. And there you can see it. Also, I'm going to go and insert a value at a specific index. So let's say number list and insert. And first, you're going to list the index where you want to insert. So I'm going to say 5. 
and the value I want to insert. And you can see there that is. We're also going to be able to delete the first occurrence of a provided value. So let's say we wanted to remove 10 that we just put inside of there. Now you're not going to see 10 in our output. We're also going to be able to remove values at a specific index. And how you do that is with pop followed with whatever the index is you want to remove. So let's say I want to remove the second one. There's our output. And I think that's a pretty good rundown of a lot of things we can do with lists. Of course, we're going to be using them more and more as the tutorial continues. But I think that's all for this video for now. And in the next part of the video, I'm going to cover list comprehensions, multidimensional lists. And of course, you're also going to solve a whole bunch of problems. Make sure you check out the quiz that is provided with this to reinforce everything you've learned. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below.